Hi everyone, my name is Dora aka Cassidy Jinx and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I make cosplay costumes for 17 years now and on this channel I usually post uh, cosplay related things obviously and if you are an old subscriber on the channel I'm terribly sorry for uh, not having content for more than a year. Um, I brought a pinned, I put a pinned comment into the comment section when I explain everything and I really want to just thank you if you stayed here during this year and I promise there's not gonna be another gigantic gap on my channel so videos are coming and let's start the tutorial because that's why you are all here. <laughs> I made this wig uh, in January. I completely forgot some of the steps, so I broke down everything. The materials that you need is a head block. It's better to have a proper head block that is the same size than your own head, than a polystyrene head, because those are more like display stuff. But this is, trust me, way more reliable. It comes with, with there's a, a plastic tool to attach the block to the table uh, that makes your work much easier. So other than the head block, obviously you're going to need a wig. I bought only one very long wig. I think it was like maybe 110 long. It's better if it's, no, it's very recommended to have a heat resistant wig because you're gonna need to kind of burn it here and there a little and some wig just cannot take any heat. Very important, a proper hairspray. I use only this one. I'm not sponsored by this brand. It's just seriously the very best uh, hairspray. The other thing is, mm, yup, <laughs> I just lost one of the glues. Uh, you need this glue. It's obviously a little bit used. Again, I'm not sponsored. It's just another very good glue that worked with uh, Vix very well. You're gonna need two uh, polystyrene balls, glue gun and glue. This is optional, you don't really need this, but this made my work a little easier. The UV resin, that works also like a very strong glue. And UV light, I use a little torch. A hair iron, you don't need to have the zigzaggy type. Uh, and it's also better if you can see and change the heat on the iron because maybe your wig can take only up to 180 degrees. Uh, mine was, I think, around 200, but it's better to go to the lowest setting and slowly come higher and higher and then see uh, how much heat your wig can take. Also, on that note, if you check it, check somewhere back and low or even just cut off a little piece of hair and test on that before you go to your actual wig. This is also optional but I highly recommend to use hair dryer. It's just basically making a shaping process a little bit faster. I don't have it here with me but you need PVA glue, the basic one that you can get anywhere, the one that many people use to make slimes, the white one, and uh, a brush. I usually use flat brush when I do something similar, but you can use a round brush. Find something that is wide enough. This is not the one that I use for this wig, it's just for to show something. <laughs> and the last thing that you need, or no, basically a little more, like you need fabric for the, for the hair ties, a couple of pins to keep the hair in shape. You can see here that I kept these pins. I can remove them because the wig is already shaped, but for example, the for the front, I use these and for another under uh, steps too. And the very last thing is the LED light that you can make by yourself. I never been very good with electronic stuff. So I bought one actually online. And this one comes with a little controller. And I just forgot that you need actually <clears throat> some tape like this electric cable isolation tape plus wire a kind of that you can easily bend but it's not super soft so it can hold its shape you can also control the eight different settings on the little switch uh, on the battery pack but obviously this one is much easier and for example if you perform on stage 
and you want to act like the character and you like to pre uh, represent different like moods on stage you can have a friend who knows exactly your performance and can control like you know that very excited then this light or when it's a bit moody then this light and you get what i mean i think this one is how I keep uh, the hair strings or hair extensions that I cut off from each week. This one has another uh, week's leftover hairs, a black wig. It's just here to show you how I'm applying the glue to each section. So first, you don't need to mark your, your eyebrows height or anything else. You can, it's optional because this wig is kept loose on the back because of the character's hairstyle you don't really have to worry for the hairline but really use the proper head block because then it's going to fit on your hair so put the wig first on the head block and make sure that it's in the center and everything fits nicely smoothly and then put some pins everywhere secure the wig uh, to the head block and then I think it's better if you cut off the extra hair straight in the beginning because it's much easier to work with a short wig. Just make sure that you don't cut off too much. So I always leave like about an extra inch compared to the length that I feel that, yeah, that should be the optional length. I, I add to that one an extra inch and then it's always working very well. And then I made the wire base for the ponytails. It's a very simple structure, but it needs to be only one piece because then it's just becoming stronger. It goes from here to here, has a loop over. The, it's like a headband, just shorter, so it doesn't go below the ears and has to point the end they are like this long only and then i've wrapped everything around very strongly with this tape to keep everything in shape and then i put it under the wig and then with a curved needle you can stitch this wire base to the wig base it doesn't have to be ultra super secure but at least use double thread and like stitch it at every one centimeter or so so make sure that it's strong but it doesn't have to be crazy strong the next step that i done the zigzag pattern on the top of the hair i basically just marked where i want to have these little v shapes and then i split one side to the other but because it's not a completely laced wig you could easily see wig cap under those extensions i used the yuhu glue because it dries clear dries very fast you don't even need the hair dryer and how i apply this glue i don't want to take off the lid but basically squeeze a little bit on the top and then gently move from two directions get some glue on the hair maybe uh, even it out with my fingertips but usually you don't don't even need that and then gently apply to the hair push it down nicely easier if you use a plastic little tool even the end of paintbrush it's good is good to use it instead of your fingers when you put push it down better if you use just very small amount of hair so instead of using this much i'm usually using only about this much so like a very very small amount and then it takes forever to make the wig but trust me it works so much better than going with a big one you can apply big chunks of hair to other places on the wig but for the split for the zigzag it's better to go one by one sorry for my english it's never gonna be any better but i'm practicing when the zigzag was done i had to create the base for the ponytails a little smaller than what you might expect but actually this is the same size ball to cover this i used the pva glue and the technique for that so imagine that i have glue on the brush first apply a little bit of glue it doesn't have to be super thick but for the 
very first layer you can add more because that's gonna be the deepest layer if you add less glue then it dries faster obviously so imagine that i applied a little bit of glue then i use my finger usually my thumb to secure the wig and then gently push the hair down it's it will stay there because there's glue underneath and then Put your brush back to the glue and then apply on the top of the hair and it dries relatively fast and I usually use tape rolls to secure the ball it doesn't go anywhere and because it's so deep under the rest of the hair you don't have to cover it entirely you can if you have enough hair so no one stops you but if you don't have enough hair just try to make it as dense as possible for the extra weft that I used after the balls were completely covered and dried. I did the same as in one of my other videos. This step is by the way completely optional. You can still use the Yuhu glue, you don't have to make wefts. This is just how I made because at the end of weft making you have bigger, thicker chunks of hair and that makes a little bit faster the entire process. And as soon as you are done with your extensions or you applied the pieces of hair to the wig with this glue, then you're gonna have a very interesting fluffy, fluffy thing and you don't have to worry about the top part of these balls at this stage cover the balls just on the like on the bottom circle with the hair not completely at the bottom because that's just not necessary but where you plan to put the hair ties a little bit under that line attach all of these longer pieces of hair but at this stage you don't have to use hairspray you don't have to shape it or anything just apply the hair so you're gonna have like very uh, some very furry balls that are completely round shaped still on the top and after you are done with this you can make the hair ties i don't think i have any videos about that but it was a very simple structure it's like a piece of matching fabric that is good for the character's own hair ties and some wedding or thicker cord whatever you have and you you have to cover that base with the matching fabric and then just uh, hand stitch it around and then you're gonna have to little like circles they are not elastic at all because they don't really need to be elastic to mark the hair ties position on the balls you can use very small dots of marker because it's going to be covered with the hair tie anyway and on the wig the wig base you can use pins with the round head and then apply as many as you need because the next step is going to be fixing all of these to the base and it has to be as symmetrical as possible in case of Zeri with an asymmetrical hairstyle of course you don't have to worry about that when you have the hair tie attached to the balls that are partially covered by longer pieces of hair you have to make a deep hole uh, not super deep but deep enough for your wire in the center of the ball and that you can you know it's just polystyrene it's easy you can i think even make one with a brush yeah and it doesn't have to be wide or anything it just needs to be enough to for the for the wire plus maybe a little more because of the glue and then what i did because it's too tight to squeeze the glue on the inside i just covered the visible parts of the wire with as much glue as i just could and then I squeezed it on the wire and then it was attached to the base and I didn't fix the hair ties to the hair because you can see that the hair ties are actually not attached to the hair this hair is still loose underneath because if you want to change anything later or you just made it a little bit messy it's going to be easier to even out the hair if the hair tie is not attached and trust me it's gonna be handy then the next step was whenever you cut uh, hair and you work with hair there's always gonna be a bunch of extra mess 
dress. So I'm talking about these tongled uh, pieces. And with this wig, I had enough to make two like little bit cone-shaped extensions on the top of the balls. So then they had more like an X shape with uh, PVA glue that I squeezed into my hand and I had the hair and I was just mixing them together and shaped it with my hand. Then you can, you can save up on the material because it's always cheaper obviously to work with one wig than using two. At this stage I just covered both of the ponytails with a very cheap hairnet that you can always get uh, when you order a wig because then it's easier to work with the rest of the wig and shape it. I also forgot to mention that when I was working with, with this part of the hair, I made extensions with simple hair ties and then I secured them around the head block with uh, these stronger pins and that was only to keep everything separated and don't make such a big mess because it's always easier. If when the very base of the ponytails were done and they were secured with the hairnet, I went down to the rest of the hair and then gently I made an even, as even as it was possible bottom hairline that was the same length that it needs to be except I kept some of the hair uh, parts a little bit longer because of the style of uh, the character's hair and they became these curly parts everywhere and I kept all, all the time very separated these front sections because I wanted them to be very symmetrical and separated from the rest of the wig because this is a very characteristic part of the wig. After the hairline was completely done and then I secured all the parts of the wig, I could attach the LED light and the LED light has a battery pack and it's here. Yeah. I had this lime uh, green taffeta for like I think I have it for more than 10 years at this point. It's, I'm a hoarder, I'm a cosplayer, so I'm a hoarder of fabrics. And this one was the closest to, to match with the wig. And I would rather use old fabrics than just, you know, buy new from everything because that's a little bit more sustainable. <laughs> so this is just double layered, so strong, a little bag and the battery pack sits in it. You can open this little bag and close it if you want to, of course when you're wearing it, and it allows you to change the batteries. The next step depends on how long your LED strip is and how many LEDs you have. I already forgot how much mine has. I think it's 40 maybe. The route for this uh, LED string starts from here and then goes right on the on the hairline of the wig. I hope you can see it. There it goes up, goes across the forehead, then goes down to the same uh, length as on the other side. A few lights here as well. And then <laughs> when it was done, uh, the lead could go to the first uh, bun. I attached the lead light this way because my lead string is only one continuous long string. Uh, then therefore you cannot remove the uh, ponytails. But also it had to be covered entirely with hair because it's better if the lead lights are not completely exposed. It's better to attach some hair here and there. Also a note on, on the LEDs, before you stitch the LED string to the wig, it's better to use again round headed uh, little pins to mark each LED where to put them because that's really, you just have to remove the pin and then stitch the LED there and then it doesn't leave any mark. And that's what I've done on the, on the balls as well. I put pins everywhere and when I was happy with the positioning of those uh, pins, then I glued the uh, LED lights one by one to the base. And for that I was using the uh, UV, what is, UV resin and the UV torch 
and I did this because you can use glue gun as well but when you use glue gun and when you move away the gun from your object then it always is a little bit of a string kind of thingy like a spider web looking stuff and there's just so much mess and you are already working with hair and you don't want extra little stuff around and the UV resin is just very very quick when one ball was done I went to the other side but at this time I went on the back of the hair here and then I went around on this uh, ponytail and when that happened I attached two uh, more leads in the front just like on the other side and then these two leads it's a little bit deeper this one than this one but this is the end basically uh, for the last string and everywhere on the base the hair base the last string attached by um, hand stitches on the ponytails it's the uv resin at this point you remove the uh, the net from the ponytails you can use the leftover hairs to attach shorter pieces on the top like here and then longer and longer pieces lower and because if you work with one wig you have obviously a very limited amount of hair try to not to work on one side only but everywhere a little bit so beard up the entire shape of this evenly everywhere around the ball but anyway let's say that you attach the uh, last string to the wig and you have the extra hairs on the on the balls and then the next step is to use the hair iron and just like i was showing in the lilia uh, wig making video try to burn a little bit your hair not like you know completely melted just as much as it seems a little bit frizzy and less smooth on the surface because then it's way easier to shape the form and when you have the inside hair parts like fluffed up a little bit then apply the hairspray to each part of that hair and try to cover it very thickly and also when you use hairspray always keep from the hair like about this much distance because then you can avoid all the clumps and visible big drops on the surface and also shake it well before you use it so let's say that you applied the hairspray to the extension and if you want a little curve you can hold the end tip of uh, the hair and then use the hair dryer on a low setting so then it doesn't blow on full power because if it's just gently blowing the air to the hair then you can you can manipulate the shape much easier again not just one side but work everywhere at the same time uh, build up the base shape and the outer layer of the ponytails have smoother hair that I didn't burn with the hair iron but uh, because there is kind of an electric character a little bit of a visible frizziness on the hair it's completely fine I think she is not like super smooth <laughs> and when you are done with the ponytails let's say that they are perfectly shaped and completely finished fix them again with like two maybe three layers of hairspray everywhere because then it's going to keep the wig in shape like not forever but for a very long time then you can work with the bottom part of the wig i still kept this uh, the front uh, very very uh, separated from the rest of the wig and what i did for the base mostly at the back and the sides that i burned again the hair but just a very little bit it doesn't even have to be visibly burned you can see that there's 
a very very slight frizziness but like really you have to open the entire hair and it's like basically a little bit frizzier than the ultra straight hair but it's almost invisible and i did this step because this gives much more volume to the hair at the end so you can cheat and make it look like that actually your wig is much thicker because everywhere it has just a little bit of fluff up just pick each extensions again <coughs> like these ones apply hairspray and for this i was just holding them in my palm when i had the hairspray if i saw any drops then i just gently evened out with my finger then hairspray and like in about a minute it was done it stayed like this forever and that's what i've done everywhere around the wig for the front sections it's a little bit more freezed up because it's so voluminous that i wanted to make it really uh, fluffy and then it's a little bit less smooth than the wig without doing any heat treatment but i, I can like it i think it worked very well and as fluffy your wig is as easy to shape it into special forms and this part the big chunks were easy i just uh, fluffed them up applied a ton of hairspray and then i was holding with my fingers when i dried it with the hair dryer for these front sections i did the same first steps but instead of using my hand i put these hair pins into the head block to keep it in shape and i used then the hair dryer but even after the hair drying process was done i kept this way the wig i think for an entire day because i didn't really want it to do anything with the pins uh, and i just wanted to make sure that it's going to stay in the same position because it's a very characteristic part of the wig yeah <laughs> i think that's it uh again just like with the ponytails when you are completely done with the with the rest of the wig and everything is uh, shaped just apply a ton of hairspray again i did mostly on the top and the shaped sections of course and up until this this point the very base of the wig is still uh, just hairspray less hairspray free because i wanted to have this free movement of the bottom section of the hair but uh, it's always good if you have a very a characteristic wig with something similar it doesn't have to be uh, zeri you can use this technique uh, to many other fluffy ponytail wigs as well but it's always good to secure your your work with a ton of hairspray at the very end and then just let it dry you can again use the hair dryer to make it faster and with these wigs of course you cannot just store them in a plastic bag like uh, simple wigs like very flat wigs or curly wigs that you know just come down uh, it's better for these to use a head block that can be a polystyrene cheap uh, basic head block or you can also use like if you have big coffee jars that had coffee on the inside just fill it with water and put your wig on the top of that and if it's not tall enough then just put a little box underneath that so you don't have to pay for new stuff in every case you just use a little bit of you know imagination uh, if i still forget something or something feels like you know to chaotic and you don't really understand what i'm talking about which is entirely possible because i know that i'm not the best to explain different things then feel free to ask me all the time i am ready to answer questions and also i swear that from now i'm gonna keep an eye on the comments and i also going to answer the old comments and every everything because i think i'm ready to return and be more social i didn't really have much going on on my instagram as well but 
Instagram is a toxic place, so I try to avoid. I just use it as a, you know, it's like a necessity. You have to be there and you have to pause there. And it's just thank you for uh, watching this video. I hope it's not too long at this time. I don't know because I'm recording on my phone that has all the footage, by the way. So uh, that's why I cannot check my work back. And um, I swear that I'm gonna make more videos, mostly wig related stuff, because I have a couple of weeks in my head. So thank you for, for watching the video. Sorry if it was too long. I try to tell every steps with my best uh, abilities and explain everything you need to do. And see you in the next video.